$75,000 commission. I had a meeting with them and they gone cold on me. And I met with the CEO and we had a great meeting, but the guy went cold on me. I said, I said, so what have, you, what have you done? Well, I've emailed him four times. He hasn't gotten back. I'm like, Jesus, well, I'm glad you came to me. It's sort of like when you hear a noise in your car, right? Some folks don't bring it into the shop. The next thing you know, you got a $10,000 bill, but the smart ones bring it in and it's only 1500 bucks. Thank God he came to me because if he kept sending those emails, it would have been over. I said, oh, and this is what you're going to do. Thankfully, we're in the bagel capital of the world. And there's a famous bagel shop called, I love bagels. I mean, even if, I, even if I'm not a New Yorker, I still love bagels. So Essa Bagel, E-S-S-A, Bagel, Essa Bagel. There's two locations in Manhattan. I said, do yourself a favor, spend 50 bucks, get a bagel tray and send it to the guy. You got nothing to lose aside from 50 bucks. So he said, oh God, you know, I don't have that much money, Aaron. I'm like, listen, you came to me. I'm telling you what the move is here. You do it or you die. He sends the bagels. The guy wrote, I wish I had the email today and I was looking for it. I couldn't find it before the session. The guy wrote him back and said, Owen, my deepest apologies. We've been really crazed, um, but I can't thank you enough for the bagel spread today. And I look forward to talking to you in two weeks because then I'm going to be able to figure out what we're going to do with our office lease. Fast forward to today, he's about to close $175,000 commission. This kid who's 25 years old. Now he's got to split some of that with his senior boss, but this would have never happened if he didn't do something different. Now, let me ask everyone a question here. And I recognize you're all, a lot of you are, is anyone doing B2B by the way, or is it all B2C? It's all, is it all B2C? Claude, is that right? Um, yeah, ba Bailey does business to business. Okay. I didn't all right. see it well. Okay, cool. Hey, Walter. So why do you think the bagel thing works so well? Guilt guilt but why else Recipro reciprocity we, we talk reciprocity? about reciprocity and uh what i'm taking away from you umbrellas bagels i think you did a coffee table book once or something like that oh yeah oh yeah you're doing the things that your competition will never do there's so much there's so much room to blow away 99 percent of your competition because they they don't do this kind of creativity, this direct marketing creativity. We're, we're really, aren't we in a community? We're in a communication business, getting attention. Yes. How do we make ourselves stand out with all this competition out there and people spending a lot of money on advertising and big fancy offices and everything? How, do, how can one guy who, with a little bit of a girl or with a little bit of creativity, how can they attract these great leads? That's, that's the question I always ask myself. And I, that's a great question, but I want to, I want everyone to dig a little deeper here. Now, what happened when this guy sent the bagels to this person? I think they, when you give someone something and then in return, they feel like they owe you. So I'm giving you a bagel. So now I owe you something. So you're uh, throwing them off them first, then it's up to them to throw it back. Yep, you're talking about Ken about the law of reciprocity. Robert Cialdini, uh, Influence. If you guys haven't read that book, you have to. It's an amazing read. You, Arizona State University professor. So how many bagels do you think this, this person sent to the, to the organization? Did he send one bagel? Dozen. He sent two dozen bagels. Yeah. So what does that mean when it, gets, when it gets sent to the office? Does this one decision maker eat two 24 bagels? Sorry, 26 because of the baker's dozen bagels? Or does the whole, their lips. the whole office was having bagels that day. And the, the note said, dear Robert, I hope you and ABC Capital enjoy these bagels from my favorite bagel store in Manhattan. Every single one of this guy's employees was going into his office saying, who the hell is this kid Owen sending me these bagels from Cushman and Wakefield? The guy looked like an absolute hero. So not only did the law of reciprocity take hold, like Ken was talking about, but also he, he, he created this, he made this person feel great about himself, right? He felt good about what happened. And th that double combination like sealed the day. So I challenge each and every one of you to think about what that could look like as you're selling to this customers. Are there certain small knickknacks you can drop off for them? It doesn't have to be expensive like Brandon was talking about. It doesn't. I would just encourage each and every one of you. I think a lot of you are probably independent contractors, so you get a lot of tax benefits with this type of stuff. 
take advantage of it. Because that right there is going to immediately differentiate you from your competition. Any questions on that? Does that make sense with everyone? Yeah. I love what you just said. Differentiate yourself from your competition. How important is that? So important. So important. Competition is fierce We're in my business. It is really, really bad. There's and, a great... Uh, um... Aaron, Aaron, no, I uh, just want to thank you. This is this is awesome content. Uh, I, I actually just received a box from Karoo. It's C A R O O, and I, I just put it in the chat there. And they do these kind of boxes that you can send out to clients, and you know, oh, starting from that. like twenty five bucks on up. And they're, uh, you know, it was a, it was a, it's maybe like a, a dozen snacks in there, but it was I just so that. fun to, to to get that. And it's it's like bringing in, you know, Christmas. Christmas box thing. I, just, I put that up at crew. I put that up in my whiteboard chat. I really appreciate that. So, if, you, yeah. if you guys have uh, Einstein bagels near you on Mondays, if you join their club, uh, Baker's dozen 13 is only seven bucks for 13 bagels. Thanks for this. 12, new 12, 12 bucks for two cream cheese included. So 25 bucks, you can, you can send enough for I mean, Dave, like I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm like my, I'm getting goosebumps. I want to get out there in your markets and just start selling. And if I'm calling on, let's say I pick a list, I got 20 warm leads. Let's just speak hypothetically, Dave. I got 20 warm leads that I know are folks that are going to do business or people that I want to build relationships with on a Monday morning, right? Cause you said Monday, Dave, is that right? If these prospects got my dozen bagels with the cream cheese spread, what do you think is going to happen over the course of time with these leads. My gut tells me you have a much higher percentage of them becoming clients. Absolutely. Quick funny story. We just moved recently to a town near New York City. And um, the first day or the second day we got here, a real estate broker sent us chocolates from a famous chocolate store in the area, probably a $30 spread. Over Thanksgiving, he sent us a bottle of wine, right? now. We're going to buy a house eventually. Guess who I'm going to be calling? <laughs> no, no, really? It, it, who it's am I going to call? Why, why don't more people do stuff like that? This is the question. Because they're, they're cheap and they're scared. There's, here, Claude, this is sort of the next topic, if that's okay. And I think this is important because we're really getting into something, right? Why do salespeople hate what they do so much? Why are they so scared to sell? And I, I kind of have one answer that I'm going to share with you, but I want to open that up. What are the what are the greatest fears that's holding salespeople back? They suck at sales. They suck. What else? Rejection. Ah, uh, was that you, Ken? Yeah. Okay. So, great one. They're in their they own should, head. In their own head, right? They can't get out of their own head, right? Yeah. They, they just they're just it's crazy. Rejection. Let's talk about rejection for a couple minutes, if that's okay, because it's it's actually it's actually really interesting. And I've been reading a lot about rejection, um, quite honestly, more for my younger sales force than for myself, because I got very used to it. But rejection is actually the only emotion, the only emotion that is treatable by Tylenol. I don't know if anyone heard that before. Treatable by Tylenol. That is how powerful of an emotion rejection is. It hurts. If you get rejected by somebody, look, you get used to it after a while, right? But we can't, we, even if you, I've been rejected 10 million times in my life and I get rejected every day. It never feels great. Obviously it'll hurt less if you get more and more used to it, but it still hurts because there's a, there's a physiological reaction to rejection. So it's very, very hard. But I don't know why people get into sales if they're if they suck at it and they don't want to get better and they're scared of rejection. It's amazing to me. Claude, well, you you think a lot about rejection. We always talk about it. Help me out here. What's yeah, the problem with salespeople today? Well, they got to be honest with themselves. OK, um, the, the thing about it is, how do you deal with rejection? When I get rejection, I use humor. Okay. Ah, great. Well, you're, well I, I need to think about it. You're not allowed to think about it. You know, it's over, isn't it? I mean, let's, you know, now that it's over, 
why aren't we doing business? Why, how are you going to do about that problem? Um, can we, can we, how do we deal with rejection in such a way? How do we put on a Teflon suit of armor so that this rejection doesn't go to our psyche, our ego, our core? How do we deal with it in such a way? Do we just get used to it? Do we accept it? Or do we say, hey, you know, I'm a good person. I'm bringing value here. I do business honestly and ethically. If they don't like, I have rights in the sales process. And, um, you know, if I get a prospect who rejects me, and I get that all the time, um, I'll say, okay, but what are you going to do about that? Now that it's over, can, can I just ask you, what are you going to do about that problem? Buying and selling, you need more space, more rental space. You said your company's growing. What are you going to do about this problem? I mean, it doesn't make, uh, help me out. I don't understand. You said you need more office space because you need more salespeople so you can make more money. You tell me, you're, you know, and here we are. I've got a solution for you in the next 30 days what's going on here? Why aren't we doing business? Turn it around. I turn it around. Okay, great. Um, Let me ask everyone a question. That's great, Claude. Let me ask everyone a question here. What do you think 90% of salespeople do when a prospect tells them that they're not interested? Hang up. Hang up. Hang up. Yeah. Bye-bye. No. Hang up. No. What do you all do? What do you guys do when the prospect tells you they're not interested? Who's going first? Tell the truth, everybody. What do you really do? Come on. I try to leave the door open, but I, I, it, I'm not strong. Okay. I appreciate your honesty. I, yeah. I, I ask them why. Ah, so let's try that out. Hey, hey, Dr. Vibe, I'm not oh. interested in you coming on your show. Uh, I'm sorry to hear about that. Could you tell me why you're not available? Yeah, you know what? I'm really busy. I have two kids at home, and I just don't have the time for that. Well, I fully understand that you got two kids at home, but you know what? I'm flexible. I know that you would bring added value to my audience and to yourself by being on the show. So is there an opportunity that we could work out a time that's convenient to your life and your family that you could appear on the Dr. Vibe show? You know what? I appreciate that, Dr. Vibe. Why don't you give me a call in 30 days and then we'll pick it up from there. All right. So I just want to confirm that you've given me permission for me to follow up with you in 30 days to follow up in regards to an interview. Yeah, that sounds good. Well, I thank you so much. I value you and your family, but I also thank you for saying that you'll show interest and in be on the Dr. Vibe show. All the best to your family. Keep safe. And if there's anything I can do in any way, please follow up and touch base with me, but I'll touch base with you in 30 days. All right, Dr. Vibe. What's going to happen in 30 days, Mr. Schreier? Or, or that's what we, you know, I'll, look, off the role play, because I want to go there in a minute. But at the outset, when Dr. Vibe asked me why, and I responded, what did he say so eloquently, or more importantly, as Claude likes to say, what did he do so eloquently to get me back into the game? It's flexible to work on your schedule. Okay, but dig deeper. Permission. Yes, permission. Yes, a question, good. But what else happened, Claude? Do you remember? Um, he, uh, he said, well, uh, he got permission for 30 days from now. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm okay. kind of a today guy, you know. I understand, but I'll tell you what he did where I, uh, I was value. emotionally involved. Add value, but he stroked me. He made me feel, I forgot what you said, because I, I Dr. Feel, Bob. Yeah, I said, you know, I, I understand the importance of your family. I, and you said, I, there was another thing you said about me being busy or something. There was something else I remember. Can't remember. Okay. Can't remember. I felt in the moment, yeah. I felt respected. Yes, I felt I felt I, like this person isn't trying to just shove his itinerary down my throat. I think ahead, I said, I think I said, Aaron, I said, I understand. I understand. I felt the empathy and the relatability with that role play. Yeah. Okay, great. Now, let's talk about something that could have been maybe a little bit different. And this is where this stuff gets dangerous. Now, unfortunately, in my world, Dr. Vibe, most people aren't like you. They're, they're, they're brokers who don't really have, you know, they, they don't have that much value to add. There's so many of us. It's not that unique. If someone says, call me back in 30 days, guess what? It's over. It's basically over. Now, it may not be you have a shot still, but it's probably over. So I think what Claude was getting at, in a situation like that, where Dr. Vibe turned something out of nothing, but then I came back to him again with sort of another stall. I gave him a little bit more. I said, just call me in 30 days. I'm trying to get him off the phone, okay? 
So you run the risk of losing me at that point. Is there something else he could have done? Is there something else he could have said at that moment in time instead of letting me off the hook? And what could that sound like? I think a lot of time people, the, the prospect needs to know what's in it for them. Okay. What's the benefit? So if we can ask the right questions to get that out of them, and then we can solve that problem, that's, that's huge. I think, I think we think a lot of times it's all about us. It's all about my paycheck, what's in it for me. But we need to think about the client, the prospect, ah, okay. what's in it for them. If we can solve that problem, then we can do business. Okay, so let's go back to it, Brandon, for a second. Let's help out Dr. Vibe a little bit. Uh, using your idea of questions, which I love, I'm coming at you. You gave me your spiel, and I said, you know what? I'm really busy. I got some kids at home. Give me a call in 30 days, Brandon. Well, let me ask you this. What, why would, why would be in a, if you ever were on a podcast, how could that help you in your business? Ah, great. I love that. Well, I think if I was on a podcast, it, it would probably be um, advantageous to my business. But look, it's um, my kids are, sc are screaming and crying. I really got to get going here. Totally understand. Totally understand. Days, though, for you to, um, to, what, to usually, this. just so you know, um, one of the things usually when people need to go, I, I get that. I just got one last question for you. If, if you could figure a way to make it work with, with your schedule and help you in your business, what would you want to do? Uh, you know, I, I, it's, I guess I'd like to do a podcast. Okay. Well, do you want us to book you for this week or next week? And you know, why don't we do it in three weeks? Okay. Are you looking at May 26th, May 23rd? What's yeah, be but, it's gotta, but it's got to be in the morning. Uh, how early? I, I, yeah, my kids are up early. I could do 8.30, 8 o'clock. Does that work? We well, can go or even earlier if you need to. Let's do 8 o'clock. Okay. 8 o'clock should work. Great. And your best email? Boom, boom, boom. Okay. All right. Hey, nice job. Okay. So maybe Dr. Five in a situation like that, you can dig a little deeper with questions. Now you got to oh, yeah. be careful. Yeah. You got to ask for permission like Brandon did to ask a question. Mm -hmm. But 90% of people, when you ask permission to ask a question, you're, you're giving someone a pedestal to allow them to talk more. Well, people well, love I, to talk. Go ahead. Well, I think, Aaron, it just builds on the fact that you're just showing respect. And most people like to be treated with respect. So if you give them respect, they'll open up. They'll open up and they want to talk. People want to talk and you're asking a good, powerful question. I love that. Okay. Now let's say you don't have such a nice person on the line, right? Or you know, it's someone, Dr. Vibe, that you want to have come on so badly. You've been trying to get this person and you know, this is probably your only shot. And if he tells you to call you in 30 days, he's just blowing smoke because he's never going to talk to you again. So what do we do then? Hey, Dr. Vibe, call me in 30 days, and I'm sure we can schedule something then. AK, never call me again. What do we say then? I could, but what's going to change between now and 30 days down the road? Okay, great. I love that. Um, you know what? It, it's just um, my schedule's crazy right now. I just don't have the opportunity to, to deal with this right now. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I hear you. We're all busy, and uh, busy is usually a good thing, so uh, it means you're doing good business. Um, you know, but... Uh, if we could help you get more business and more clients, wouldn't that be a benefit to you? Good question, Bailey. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd be stupid not to, right? I, I would, I, it, it might not be the wisest thing if you to, to turn down business. And the great thing about podcasts is that, you know, once, it's at, once you do it once, it's out there and people can listen to it all the time. And people are going to keep coming to you uh, from hearing this. So... I, I'm sure you can, it, I see you nodding your head. It sounds like you can see the benefit from this, right? Yeah, you know what? I, I love your passion around this stuff, Bailey. What, what, what do we do next here? Hey, hey, wait a second. Not only you're passionate, you're smiling? God forbid. Go ahead, Bailey. What's next? What do we do? Where do we go from here? We need to set up a time to, to do the podcast. You don't have time here in the next uh, uh, half hour, hour today, or would you rather set, set up something for later on this week? Uh, you know what? Let's just do it right now, Bailey. Fuck it. Okay. Sounds good. Great. Hey, I love that. Look, I want to talk about Bailey right now because as important as his words were, and by the way, you did an excellent job with them. I felt comfortable with Bailey. He was excited. He, he, I felt emotional connection. Did anyone else sense that? Did anyone feel the emotion in that? Bailey, you turned it on for a second and you know you did. Yeah. Right? You know you did because you started smiling and you felt it. And that's when I felt it too.
And those are the moments in time that will make or break your opportunity to sell someone. And if you're not happy, you're not enthusiastic, and you're not passionate, you might as well be doing something else. And you brought it, Bailey. That was excellent. And Dr. Vibe, you seem to have liked that too. Okay. So we got the questions, right, with the value add. We got the emotional connect connection with the question asking. Now, what about playing hardball? What can that sound like, right? Is there, is, you, you know what, again, suppose we have someone who's a real jerk. And I think this is maybe time to call on you, Claude, if that's okay. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, and Claude, you can't use the line you already use. What's gonna change in 30 days? You're gonna have to do something different here, okay? Um, All right. You, you know what, Aaron, we have a, we, Aaron, we have a problem. What do you mean, Claude? You, you know what? If Here's the thing. You need more business. You want to make a lot more money. Uh, why do you think my podcast is... I am scheduled right now till, um, uh, till December of 2021. But, I, but I, made a, I made a note here on my desk. I was going to get hold of you. Why do you think my podcast is so popular? I get some of the top authors, speakers, lecturers in the world come to my podcast. Why do you think it's so popular? Take a guess. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not sure. I guess you get good people. I get good people. People get a lot of attention, a lot of not notice. And I, I'd love, I'd love, I know you're busy and I know the kids and everything like that, but I think you got a little window of opportunity right now. Can we just give me a date where we can schedule you? We'll record it. Watch your business. Man, store. You? Watch you get new prospects. Hey, people and people in there. Um, I, I, I'd love to earn your trust and do business with you. Give me, what date can we do before you go? Boom, boom. I love that. It's, here's love the rule. That. It's over when you say it's over. The, yeah, that's right. Pro, salespeople, uh, well, I'm busy. Call me in 30 days. And I think you said it earlier. What, do, what does the amateur salesperson do? Oh, okay. You know, unicorns and rainbows. Goodbye. Click. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to tell the one story. I won't let you get away without the guy who hung up the phone on you. Oh, I got, I got to share a couple quick stories. I think this is in the same vein. So a couple things I want to share. Um, and, and by the way, I, I could spend four hours hearing your ideas because you're all teaching me so much right now. But a couple of things that were really interesting for me. One time I was making cold calls with a group of 10 people. They were listening to me make cold calls. I was training them. I got this uh, C, chief operating officer of a big hedge fund on the phone. And it was probably the most violent rejection I've ever got in my career, screaming at me. Like now he, he, he reamed me for like 30 seconds about how, I'm, how, how I could cold call someone like came at a company like his thinking I'd ever have a chance of doing his business and slams the phone down. Like the, you could almost feel the room shake from the phone being slammed and all the little reps around me are laughing at me. They're like, yeah, Aaron got hung up on, he's trying to teach us that sucker. I said, guys, listen to me. I've been hung up a million times. That was not a normal hang up, right? There was something wrong with that hang up. This is what we're all going to do. We're going to come back to this conference room at the end of the day, 530 today, and I'm going to call him again. And then you're going to come listen to what that sounds like. So at that point, I'm a little bit nervous because if this guy calls the cops, this could get ugly. So anyways, they all come into the conference room. I pick up the phone. I get Jim O'Brien. That's his name. I say, Jim, Aaron Schreier. He's like, what? I said, Jim, I just want to tell you, I feel really badly about how that call went earlier today. I didn't mean to upset you. I had information on your building and your landlord that I thought was going to be valuable and help your firm save a lot of money on your real estate. I didn't mean to come across in any way to upset you. Please accept my apologies. He goes, Aaron, I appreciate that. There's been a death in my family recently and uh, I shouldn't have reacted to you the way I did. Give me a call in two weeks and we'll schedule something. I said, Jim, I know how busy you are. Let's put something in the calendar right now. How's Wednesday the 15th at 10 a.m.? You got it, Aaron. Fast forward, this guy's one of my good friends. We've been on bicycle rides around Central Park like four or five different times. Hopefully in the next two years, I'll have a chance to make a few hundred thousand dollars off of that. There's one example. So just because someone tells you it's over, right? Think about what the conversation was like. Call them later the day or call them in a week from now. It's not over. It's over like Claude said, when you say it's over. Yeah. One quick story about the over thing. I, I got a, a $200,000 commission one time for leaving over 45 voice messages for someone. <laughs> I wrote letters. I dropped off umbrellas. 
I fucking did everything. <laughs> On the 45th voicemail, I got a call from this guy's CFO. He, she goes, Aaron, this is Sally Johnson from uh, Axel Miller. I'm like, oh my God, I almost like jumped out of the phone. She's like, I almost lost the sale, quite honestly, because I was like so ecstatic that they called me. She goes, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, yeah, Sally, please, what's up? Well, we, Michael got your voicemail. I'm like, voicemail? I left them 500 voicemails. That's okay, I didn't say that. Can you come into my office? We, our lease is expiring in a year and we need to deal with it. Boom. Just because I didn't give up on leaving voicemails because I knew this was a good prospect. So never give up is another idea I might want to share with you. Another one I want to use, one of my favorite lines that Claude's taught me, and it, very few people have the audacity to use this line. Uh -oh. <laughs> I, call, I, I called up a hedge, let me get in trouble here. I called up a hedge fund guy um, who uh, was talking to his landlord, a big commercial landlord, about taking his office lease and renewing the lease for a 10 year period. And he wasn't going to use a broker which is literally economic suicide for a, a corporate tenant in New York City because landlords are in the business to do one thing and one thing only, and that is to make money. make money. And some tenants think that that's not true and decide to have a wonderful relationship with their landlords. So this guy, <laughs> this guy, I knew because the, the junior broker, the junior rep who came to me for help told me this ahead of time. I get him on the phone. His name is Roy Niederhofer. He's like a billionaire guy. And we're not talking about like a lot of money to a billionaire, but a lot of money to me for this deal. Roy picks up the phone. He goes, Roy, this is Roy. I said, Roy, this is Aaron Schreier over at Cushman Wakefield. He goes, hey, Aaron, what's up? I said, Roy, do you promise not to get mad at me? <laughs> Just like that. Just like that. And he goes, what's up? I won't, I won't get mad at you. I understand you're talking to your landlord without a broker, Roy. Nine times out of 10, when tenants do that, they wind up paying way too much for their real estate. You're a master of your universe. Let me do what I do best and help you save a ton of money because I know that I can. Wouldn't it be worth 15 minutes for me to meet you and tell you how I can help you? He said, all right, you got it. Boom. We did a $200,000 deal because of that one line. You promised not to get mad at me where this guy would have, if I was, if I said the same old nonsense, I would have had no shot at that transaction. Absolutely none. So I know we're getting close to the top of the hour here. We've covered a lot of ground. I actually have more things to cover, but maybe Claude, I can come back in another quarter or something like that and talk with the team. God, we'd, but, we'd, um, we'd love for you to come back. You just reminded yeah. me. Uh, just a quick story. I, I was bothering this one prospect who I really wanted to do this real estate deal. Why are you calling me so much? And I said, because I really want to earn your trust in business. I said, if I'm, if I'm working this hard to get it so that you and I can do a mutually beneficial business, how hard do you think I'm going to work with you if you agree to do business with me today? You know, if I'm working, 100%. you know, you've got to find a different way to make that. What do you want that? I always ask this one question. What do you want that prospect to say about you when they get off the phone? I want them to be exhausted. I want phew, that guy. That person was different. That, that I think I got the right. But I think I got the right person. I think 100%. we have to show. I think we have to show. We have to show tenacity, creativity, all the all these great things you talked about today. Mm -hmm. Well, look, look, we got a couple minutes left. What are some recaps? What are folks going to take away from this today? Because hopefully this isn't a waste of time. I want to know what people might be doing differently to help them increase their sales. I got one thing to say. It's the, 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 the lines that you've mastered and feel so comfortable using comes across in your confidence. So when you're on the phone, you're you know learning what you've learned and how you've applied it really comes across in your presentation. Great, I appreciate that. But we could all be more confident because all we have to do is one thing. And what's that one thing? Ac action. Action. And how does any baseball player, any athlete get better at anything? Practice. 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 That's it. Um, what else? Give me one more thing before we go. Be creative. Yes, Ken. Love that. Be creative and don't cheap out. Get stockings for a couple bucks.
right? Make it smart, make it cute. Mm -hmm. I, people, I, like I'm a sucker for Starbucks gift cards. Someone gives me a $5 Starbucks gift card. I feel like I won the lottery. I go to Starbucks, maybe I have to come out of pocket because the drinks are so expensive <laughs> a little bit, but I love that. Yeah. I love coffee, right? It's a $5 gift card. Someone, all these salespeople, they hammer me, they hound me, they email me, they email me. Not one of them sends me a Starbucks gift card for $5. You know what's going to happen if they do? I may not do business, business with them, but I would tell them that I'm not going to do business with them. So they can do what? They can remove me from their stupid list that they're wasting so much time on. Uh -huh. But guess what? There may be a chance that I do business with them or I know someone who should do business with them. And a $5 gift card might be all it takes. Yeah. Look, everybody, I know we're almost out of time. I put my, um, if anyone's on LinkedIn, I put my, uh, my bio, uh, a link to my bio in there. Connect with me on LinkedIn. I try to put out a lot of like different types of uh, materials and articles on sales. And Claude, once again, I can't thank you enough. What a crew you got here. I wish these folks all worked at my company because my company would be crushing it. So we need good people like you guys. Can we take Aaron, can ask quick question? questions? I see Audrey has her hand up. Go ahead, Audrey. Go ahead. Audrey is a superstar hey. broker in Las Vegas. All right. Oh, thanks Ooh. so much, Claude. Thank you. Go can ahead. you hear me? Yes, go ahead. How often do you role play? Or as a new agent, were you role playing, practicing? All the time. I mean, all I'd role play by myself. I role play <laughs> all. Claude knows we used to role play all the time in our sessions. We used to spend an hour role playing. Mm -hmm. So I role play with my reps all the time because I don't think there's a better exercise for it. So mm -hmm. I can't I can't encourage you. Mm -hmm. I really apologize, everyone. I have to run to another meeting. This was amazing. Uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. I wish you guys all the best. I love what you're doing, Claude. Thank you so much for having me today, everybody. Thank you, Aaron. Have a great, great day, everyone. Go get some sales. Thank you, Aaron. Bye. Thank you.